Now I know you really want to jump in and start seeing the process of designing and integrating reports. However, if you're new to Telerook reporting, then I urge you to not skip this chapter as it'll help you get acquainted with the different products and pieces that work together as part of the Telerook reporting overall solution. One of the reasons this course exists is because there's a small learning curve to getting up to speed with Telerik reporting. Once you get the hang of it, you should be able to fly. But until then, it's important to learn about the tools available and the fundamentals behind the solution. That said, let's quickly go over some of the basics of Telerik reporting. There are a few key components to work with and different options for obtaining each. In this chapter, I'll explain the different parts that are required and we'll see an example setup, walkthrough, implementation, and integration all in the chapters to come. The first component is report designers, which are used to create the reports. There are three different designers and I'll cover them in the next lesson. Then we have viewers. Once the reports are designed, they can be viewed and there are a number of different ways to view the reports as well. Then the reporting services product itself, which needs to be installed either using the Telerik control panel or the NuGet private feed or using the MSI installer downloadable from your Telerik account. Reports need to be designed, so a designer tool is required to do this. Telerik reporting offers three different design tools to create reports and you can use the tool that suits your requirements best. The standalone desktop designer is a tool downloadable by itself and it does not require Visual Studio or a web application in order to run. It is a separate tool that empowers report authors to create reports without needing a developer's time to do so. The web report designer can be integrated into a web application should a web interface be required for designing the reports. It is built on HTML, JavaScript, and CSS standards and uses Kendo UI styling. The goal of Web Report Designer is to empower the end users to author reports by embedding the WRD or Web Report Designer into your web application. It also offers a more intuitive designer user experience. The Report Designer for Visual Studio runs inside Visual Studio and allows editing the underlying type definitions of reports using C Sharp or Visual Basic and it only runs under the .NET framework and is not available for .NET Core. The design phase produces a report file that can be viewed using one of the available report viewers that comes with Telerik reporting. A report viewer is just a component that you can drop into an existing application, point it to a report, and it will display a dynamic report in your application. Which viewer should you use? Well, typically you'd want to select a viewer that is going to be compatible with your application. If you have a web application, then there are viewers for ASP.NET Core, Blazor, ASP.NET MVC, Angular, React, and Vue. If you want to integrate a viewer into a desktop app, then there are viewers for WPF and WinForms. In this course, we'll integrate the report viewer for Blazor just to give you an example of how it works with the viewer. Now, I've already talked about designers and viewers. These tools are just part of the overall lifecycle for the reporting solution. Let's go through the stages of a report lifecycle to better understand it now. Understanding the report lifecycle, what happens and when, is crucial to effectively use the Progress Telerook reporting suite. Step one is define the report. If you're using the standalone report designer, then you'll generate a TRDX or a TRDP or a TRBP XML file to be handed off to the developer for integration. The XML can be stored as an XML definition resource that are then packaged in a zip file, that's the TRDP, or in plain XML format, or as a collection of report definitions, a report book that are packaged in a zip format. If you're using Visual Studio Report Designer, then the report resources are stored in resx.net managed resource files. Depending on the programming language that you used when you define the report, the report class consists of either Visual C Sharp class files or Visual Basic files. And if you opt for the Web Report Designer, which is essentially a control you can embed in a web application to make the design stage be accessible by end users, then the generated report definition file is output to the destination you specify as the report definition storage, and it implements the I definition storage interface in your code. By default, the file definition storage is already provided out of the box for you. Once the report is defined and the definition XML is generated, the file needs to be referenced by the report processing service. When a report viewer requests the report from the service, the processing stage of the report begins. In this stage, the fetch data has to be filtered, sorted, and grouped. The expressions have to be evaluated, and data has to be bound to the report UI elements. Once the report has been processed, it'll be handed off to the specific renderer, such as PDF, CSV, or HTML. 
If the report is being displayed in the browser, then the HTML renderer is used and paging could be applied at this stage. If the report is being exported, then the PDF or CSV renderer can be used. The report header and footer sections are also rendered at this stage, as well as the associated expressions in the header and footer. The header and footer are just two sections of the report. Let's now take a look at all the different sections of the report. By default, a newly created report is divided into three visual sections. And in order to create a more functional report, you have to understand how the report is structured. The three visual sections are page header, detail, and page footer. A report can have many pages depending on how much data is displayed, but each page will have the same page header and footer. The detail section that's in the middle will have the same components, but just the data will change based on the page you're on. So besides those, there are other sections that are not on by default, and I'll discuss them a bit later. Now let's talk about the page header. This section is printed at the top of every page. For example, you can use the page header to repeat the report title on every page. And since the paging of a report strongly depends on the format it's rendered to, like PDF or HTML, this section and its items are processed by the corresponding rendering extension after the report data has been processed. Which means that by the time the header is rendered, the number of the pages and current page will be known here and can be displayed. The detail section. This section is printed once for every row in the data source. This is where you place the report items that constitute the main body of the report. The detailed information will be displayed in this section. And finally, we have the page footer. And just like the page header, the footer is printed on every page at the end of every page. A common use of the page footer is to display the page number, which, like the header, is also processed at the end after the report data. So it also has access to the number of pages and the current page information. All right, so besides the three default sections, which I've just mentioned, other sections can be turned on as well. The table of contents provides a set of navigation links to report items and displays the page numbers where they can be found. The user can click the entries in the table of contents to navigate to their report page, which displays that item. The table of contents section can be displayed before or after the report header or the report footer section based on the user preferences. Now, the report header and report footer. Now, these are different than the page header and footer. This section is printed just once at the beginning of the report and at the end of the report. If there is a table of contents section, you may specify its position with respect to the report header, either before or after. Use the report header for information that might normally appear on the cover page, such as a logo or a title or a date. Now, the group header and footer. This section is printed at the beginning of each new group of records. You can use the group header to print the group name. For example, in a report that is grouped by product, use the group header to print the product name. 